This is WKYT This Morning. It's bright and early here on your Tuesday. Good morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope your day's off to a fabulous start. We'll make it a good one, right? Yes, we will. Now at 6.30, a convicted killer is preparing to make her case for an early release from prison a day after the victim's family pleads for her to stay behind bars. Oh, we'll get to hug and kiss her again. I know I will. The parents of a murdered Kentucky girl talk about the man accused of killing their seven-year-old daughter. So we just want to give you 50 bucks. And police in a Kentucky city are trying to make the holidays brighter for hundreds of people with random acts of kindness. And we're looking at those temperatures in the 40s and 50s. We get into your afternoon. 50s back in the forecast. 60s tomorrow. And then those changes come. I'll show you a few flakes in your forecast. And also some really cold air. That's coming up in a few minutes. And let's get you right up to the minute on the news. It is one of Lexington's most notorious murder cases. It happened three decades ago. Today, a convicted killer will ask the state parole board to release the person, one of the people convicted in this, from prison. Karen Brown and her lover, Elizabeth Turpin, were convicted of killing Turpin's husband, Michael, back in 1986. Brown's hearing comes a day after an emotional plea from the victim's family to keep their son's killer in prison. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk with a look at the day ahead. Good morning, Rebecca. The family is still struggling with a lot of raw emotion. Speaking through their grief and tears, they have one urgent and emotional request for the parole board. Keep Karen Brown in prison. Don't let him out. It has been about 30 years since Michael Turpin was murdered, but you can still see just how much pain his family feels from his death. Now some of their old scars are now opening back up again because one of Turpin's killers is up for parole. Karen Brown, his wife's lover, was convicted of murder back in 1986. Turpin was stabbed to death while she held him down. Brown told a parole board three years ago that she is a changed woman and would try to repay Turpin's family if she's granted parole. Turpin's brother does not want that to happen. He was 17 when his brother was murdered. He actually called me and wanted me to come over and now, um, if the parole board requires Brown to serve out, as the brother was saying there in that emotional plea, she will serve the rest of her life sentence. The board could make their decision today. They're meeting for another parole hearing in LaGrange in just two hours. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, there's been a lot of emotion in this uh, all along the way. I covered that trial back in September of uh, 1986, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, today. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for the update from our newsroom. A month after a Kentucky girl was murdered, her parents are talking about the terrible crime. Gabby Doolin was found dead less than an hour after she disappeared during a youth football game at Allen County Scottsville High School. Her body was found behind the school in a creek. Police say the seven-year-old was kidnapped, raped, and murdered. A grand jury indicted Timothy Madden in the case. The Doolins say Madden had a daughter who cheered with Gabby. Her father says he saw Madden the night Gabby went missing. And I saw him walking up the fence from at the ballpark. And I couldn't, it was dark, I couldn't tell who it was originally. And I hollered, I was asking a lot of people that night who they were. I mean, it, I thought he was helping me search. She had been around him you know, at all the practices and the games, she would have trusted him just enough. Brian Doolin also says he graduated from Allen County Scottsville in 1995, one year before Madden finished at the same school. Investigators say they have DNA evidence linking Madden to Doolin's death. He'll be arraigned in circuit court on January 13th. New this morning, there's no sign of a man who lived in a Perry County home that was destroyed in a fire. The home in the Viper community is a total loss. Family members of the man who lived there say they're worried he might have been inside the home when the fire started last night. The debate over separation between church and state is taking center stage in an eastern Kentucky school district. Johnson County Superintendent Tom Salyer announced all religious references front will be removed from school Christmas plays. Dozens of parents and students are protesting the decision. This comes after the school board said it received complaints about school plays using the word Christ and Jesus. Sawyer says he understands this is an unpopular decision, but says he cannot risk a potential lawsuit by ignoring the law. We don't want to 
uh, do anything that would cause harm to our district or, or our children here in Johnson County Schools. Maybe they should take their money supply away because all of our money says in God we trust on it. You think they would change their mind if we took their money supply away? Some of those parents upset about the school board's decision say they plan to keep protesting until the board changes its mind. Time this morning is 6.36 on WKYT, and a Central Kentucky Kroger remains closed this morning after a fire. A viewer shot this eyewitness video of the fire at the Kroger on Brighton Park Boulevard in Frankfort. You can see there the picture and the flames leaping above the store. Firefighters say strong winds caused those flames to spread. It was busy at the time. They estimate that more than 100 people were in the store when the fire started. Police evacuated the building and nobody was hurt. It is still not clear how the fire started. Governor Matt Bevin says Kentucky universities and community college presidents have agreed to admit National Guard members until the state can reimburse the schools for their tuition. Bevin's office says that the more than $5 million program is about $1 to $2 million short of the amount needed. Last week, the Guard said applications for assistance spiked this year, and it had to deny almost 700 Guard members funds for the spring semester. Bevin's administration says it is looking at funding the current budget and the budget for the upcoming session. Uh, but of course, the governor made it very clear yesterday in a speech in Lexington that he wants these guard members to be able to go to college. A Louisville based whiskey maker has a spirited lawsuit on its hands this morning. Cesarek, the maker of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey, is suing Jack Daniels. The Courier Journal reports that Sazerac claims that Jack Daniels' use of the word fireball in its Google ads for Tennessee Fire is a trademark infringement. Sales of cinnamon spirits have soared by almost $60 million in two years' time. Well, the Sacramento Kings guard Rajan Rondo has been suspended one game without pay following a dispute with an NBA referee. The NBA says Rondo directed a gay slur toward Bill Kennedy before leaving the court after he had been ejected from the game. On Monday, Kennedy told Yahoo Sports that he is gay. Rondo apologized on Twitter, saying his actions were out of frustration and do not reflect his feelings toward the LGBT community. Well, he belted out another classic tune, but was it enough to put him on top? That's what everybody's wondering. <laughs> Kentucky native Jordan Smith will find out his fate on The Voice tonight. WKWT's Mike Byer is at our live desk with a look at how the Harlan County native getting quite a bit of support from his hometown. With $100,000 and a recording contract with Universal Music Group on the line, Harlan, Kentucky's Jordan Smith gave three spectacular performances last night during the Voice season finale. Smith started things off with his rendition of Climb Every Mountain. Like most of his performances, it left the judges in awe. For his next performance, the 22-year-old teamed up with Adam Levine to sing the Beach Boys hit God Only Knows before capping his night off by singing his favorite Christmas song, Mary Did You Know. As Smith performed out in Los Angeles, hundreds of people got together in his hometown, taking over the Harlan Center on South Main Street. This is where they had a front row seat to all of Smith's performances, like the one he began his night with. Outstanding vocals there. Now, if you're looking to vote for Jordan, there are four different ways to do so. Each person can vote up to 10 times on the Voice app and the Voice Facebook page, but get them in quick because voting closes at noon today. Meanwhile, all of Smith supporters are invited back to the Harlan Center tonight at 8 o'clock. That's when the season finale will begin. At the end of the show is when America will pick one of the four remaining contestants as the season nine champion of The Voice. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right. Well, what a run it has yeah. already been, and, and we expect him to win. But whether he wins or not, uh, certainly he's going to be around. That He'll voice, still be on the scene, I think. <laughs> that voice is going to be out yeah. there, you know. Uh, well, when a police officer stops you, you and to give you, you know, a little piece of paper. Um, you probably expect a ticket, right? Uh, I usually try to get out of it, but in Louisville this week, that paper could turn out to be something much more valuable. For the next four days, officers are handing $50 bills to people randomly. As you'd expect, the generous gift is really putting people in the Christmas spirit. Police say they are spreading some holiday cheer because they wanted to make a difference in the lives of the people they serve. So we just want to give you 50 bucks. Seriously? Yeah. It definitely helps to fill up the tank, huh? It definitely does. A, a good Christmas present will definitely help out. 
Well, police are giving away $10,000 that was raised through donations. That means 200 lucky people will be handed one of those $50 bills. We're seeing this a lot and lot these days. Time of the year for it, and they yeah. had a good turnabout, uh, certainly there, but uh, <laughs> some people pretty happy there, thinking they were in you trouble. You can see why. <laughs> they get the $50 bill. All right, time to check live drive traffic this morning at 641, and let's see how things are moving out on the roads this morning. Here is a look, and uh, current travel times are pretty much normal throughout the uh, metro area. We see no uh, major delays at this point uh, along uh, Kentucky Avenue and uh, over there around uh, High Street and in that area this morning between 9 and 10, they'll be doing some manhole work. Uh, and so that is something to keep in mind. Let's look at our uh, current travel times. If you're coming in from uh, the Bluegrass, one of those uh, cities surrounding Lexington, and uh, there you go, uh, things should be uh, fairly normal, uh, most areas. Hey, that's good. Normal's good. All right, everybody buckle up, make it a safe drive in. Much more WKYT this morning on the way on your Tuesday. A college student's Christmas photo is going viral. It's because he's posing with a fake family. <laughs> look at this awkwardness after weather. Okay. It has been a very, very long time since we felt these temperatures that are coming up on Friday and Saturday. I'll show you how low we go and if we see some flakes along with that. Coming up next.